I'm Dan Persons. I am here in the courtyard with Josh Kimber of Clutter Magazine. I'm not sure about why this is being called the courtyard. I'm, am I am I going to have my head shaved and uh, prepared for human sacrifice or anything like that? Maybe, if you're lucky. <laughs> Let's talk about Clutter Magazine. Hold okay. on. Let me back up here. So, okay, so. Tell me, tell me what is uh, the mission of uh, Clutter Magazine? Uh, Clutter is an interesting brand. Uh, you know, it started eight years ago as uh, a vinyl toy magazine to cover a burgeoning scene. And over the last eight years, it's really seen the industry grow and change, and Clutter has changed with the scene itself. So uh, now, we just recently reformed as Clutter Media Group, and we're publishing the magazine four times a year. We've moved operations over from the UK. We're also doing a lot of interactive outreach. We're in the middle of launching an augmented reality scavenger hunt with Gold Run. We're running monthly Facebook contests. We're doing exclusive toys uh, with our some of our friends. We've created the Designer Toy Awards, which we uh, did for the first time this year and awarded people and held the ceremony at San Diego Comic-Con back in July, if I have my date straight, um, and just released the Toy Prince, which is a variation of the Toy King, the award that we had designed by Pete Fowler, especially for the Designer Toy Awards, and which was also manufactured by Cherry Vinyl, just to give all the proper shout outs. Um, so, we originally started as a magazine, but really now we're much more of a comprehensive media outlet, and we really see our mission as um, helping and illuminating and, and growing the industry as a whole. Now you've been talking about the um, industry, the growth of the industry over the past few years, and God knows for how many years this has this con in general has been sort of uh, a nexus for uh, the crossing of industry, mass market, and art. What is happening particular in the, uh, the toy industry with uh, this, and how, how does this enter into the crossing of um, mass market and art? Uh, that's a good question. You know, the people who are making toys are in general the trendsetters who are also working on a lot of the mass market campaigns that you see. A lot of the, the designers themselves do have other jobs and do do other things. So you might see um, the same people who are designing toys also being the people who are designing tattoos or designing logos or painting. So. Designer toy world itself is kind of like the tip of an iceberg where people are being their most creative. I think if you ask them what they love to do, they love making toys or they love painting toys or they love sculpting. And then they also do a lot of other things. But what you really get here is sort of a like liquid detergent, crystallized point of this is the most creative part of people's lives and you really have the, the hub of the trendsetters and the tastemakers present here at uh, New York Comic Con or wherever you might have an industry gathering like this. And it's always pretty impressive to be in the room with these people because they're really, really talented. Right behind me now, we have L'Amour Supreme painting uh, uh, toy prints that was designed by Pete Fowler. I mean, this is one of the most talented dudes in the industry and he's right here. And there's probably another 20 or 30 people in the room easily. Um, that's, that's a a slice they're here right now you know you wouldn't necessarily know that they are to look at them but these are the people that are designing your logos we're designing your houses we're designing your cars and we're coming to get you so don't mess with us just holy kidding. shit just kidding <laughs> so in, that, was, in, that was from fight club <laughs> is um in some afterlife uh is andy warhol sitting around going aha uh -huh, i was right he's 100 percent right um i love quoting him the business of art is business. That's really what, you know, it's what he was doing, it's what we're doing. Um, I think that a lot of what, whether they know it or not, a lot of the toy designers are making what they personally fetishize. And 
Warhol soup cans were that. And it's, it's a great example. You know, he painted soup cans because his mother fed him Campbell's soup when he was, you know, home and wanted to feel, you know, comforted by his mother. A lot of what people are making here are their, their ideals and dreams and uh, visions from their childhood that they love. And it's this exact same emotional relationship between the artist and the art, and it's the same type of commerce. Now, I'm an acquisitive sort myself. Unfortunately, I'm an acquisitive sort of limited means, which means walking through here just kills me. Um, but do you want to, do you want to show me some of the uh, some of the things you uh, have here? Explain what we've got here yeah, at, at the yeah, booth. Yeah. Um, this is an amazing plush figure, handmade uh, for clutter. There's uh, it's a limited edition of 25, made by Lana Crooks, the plushinator. Each one is hand sewn. All of the eyes are hand cast. And each one is also uh, numbered and signed in embroidery by Lana Crooks. And they're amazing. She calls them the Coral Mari. I love them. This is actually not for sale. This is one of the trophies from the Designer Toy Awards. Mm. I had one made for the New York staff to keep in posterity. Have those already been handed out yet? These were all handed out uh, at San Diego Comic Con this year. For uh, the 2011 Toy Awards, 2012 Toy Awards will kick off in San Diego, but the actual award ceremony will be at New York Comic Con next year. You hear that, San Diego? Take that, San Diego. Um, and then these are uh, toy princes, which are distinguished from the Toy King because they don't have the antlers and some of the modeling. Um, we did that intentionally because the only way to get the Toy King is to win the Toy King. But the toy prints itself, um, it's the same basic design, and these are a limited edition of 20 hand-pulled rotocast by uh, Cherry Vinyl, which is a partnership between Julie B's from, uh, from Pretty and Plastic and Luke Rook from Lulubel Toy Bodega. Uh, so we're really, really proud to have these. We launched them last night at Concrete Bar, and uh, like, like I showed you before, we're having them customized by different people in the industry that, that are friends of Clutter. Very lovely. Josh, thank you for talking. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Show, yeah show it. Show. Definitely, this is, yes. This is uh, the latest issue of Clutter. This one was actually produced in the U.S. and it's a larger format. Uh, we're really proud of it. Go to your local toy store and buy it or come visit us online and order one. Uh, and then we also have the original uh, 14 issues of Clutter Magazine. These were all uh, made in the UK and these are all imports. Um, and then also on the wall, one last thing I forgot, we have silk screens that are signed and numbered by Pete Fowler, who also designed the Toykin. And these prints were made for us by 1X Run. Woo woo. What's up, Jesse? Now, Josh, yes. thank you very much. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure.